One of the most common questions I get on the channel is how to hire an artist. So I figured I'd talk with one. So in this episode, we're going to hang out with Jeff Wamister, currently a director at Warner Brothers Animation. Hey. <laughs> Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Hey there, welcome back to Surviving Animation, your guide to make it in the business of cartoons. My name is Eric Calderon. As you may have noticed, I'm in kind of a new place because I just moved. So this is my kitchen. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are working there in your kitchen as well. Um, so let's get down to it. Today's episode is about working with artists. So I have my good friend here, Jeff Wamister, who not only is a director and a designer and a storyboard artist, he's also a comic book artist. And I think, Jeff, you recently had a, a Kickstarter be successful. Is that correct? Yeah, Electropunk. It just, they just funded and then we hit the stretch goal too. It was pretty exciting. Wow. Congratulations on that. So Thank Jeff you. and I go back a little bit. We've done a few jobs together. And uh, the other secret thing about us is that we're both weightlifters. <laughs> so I see you're already, you're, right. wearing, you're wearing the colors. You're wearing the rogue weightlifter. It's oh, <laughs> there we go. So Jeff is one of those uh, rare individuals who's, uh, you know, both an artist and physical. So, you know, we, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about working out, a lot of time talking about art, talking about business of cartoons. But, you know, let's get down to the subject at hand. So uh, as Jeff and I experience, and as many guys out there might be curious about, when you work in animation, you have to work with a lot of artists. So, you know, what I thought would be beneficial is to have a little organic conversation with an actual artist and talk about some of the things that are important to them when you hire them and uh, what kind of things makes their job easier and what makes their job more difficult. So, you know, Jeff, I think, as you and I know, probably the, the two themes that we're going to hit on over and over again today is communication and clarity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the most important part of the whole process, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, uh, the drawing part for you, I'm sure, is the easier part. It's the talking back and forth with the client that becomes hard. Yeah, it's always trying to figure out what that other person's trying to communicate to you, as well as you, if you're the person getting the artist trying to communicate the idea to them and often you're dealing with guys that aren't artists themselves so often they don't know what they want so you have to actually try and figure out what they want so that's part of it is on the artist and part is on the people who are hiring yep the yep. artist yeah so i think you know whenever i work with artists um you know and, and jeff will chime in as we talk about this you know i have kind of about five or six general rules that i try to keep to so i'm going to overview them really quickly and then we'll talk with them more in depth. So, you know, the first thing I like to do is always clearly communicate the creative vision. You know, then I was on agree on the exact deliverables, especially the number of revisions. Um, I set a schedule. Then I let the artist know uh, where they can express themselves and when they can't. And then I want to make sure that I do my best, you know, whether it's as an independent or part of a company, to be true to the payments and payment schedule. <laughs> I think that's critical. I think more than people know. Yeah, yeah. And then the final yeah. thing is, you know, really pre-agree before even a pencil hits the paper is, you know, what is the arrangement of credits? What is that artist's future involvement? Um, you know, what is the ownership of the underlying material to begin with? So um, that's the overview. So let's, let's go, them, go through them one at a time. So Jeff, when I say clearly communicate the creative vision, you know, let's say I have a job I want to give to you, um, what kind of things are important to you? I think the most important things are like, what are comparables or what are things that you can point to to say, I'm looking for this direction or I'm looking for that. You could be like even a combination of those two so that the artist can say, okay, I can relate to this and I can look at other stuff in that range and I can know, oh, okay, this is how we could look at solving problems that you are hiring me to solve. Um, it's so important for that artist to be able to reference that. If you don't give them kind of, a clear way of seeing that um, it, they you're going to spend a lot of time a lot of your time just trying to f come to that solution in the first place right so right first thing is if if you know what the vision is clearly communicate and give comparables if you don't know what the vision is that's where you're kind of hiring the artists to do then you give them freedom to start looking and give you suggestions got it got it now but do you clear, find go ahead i would say clearly say that like when you're hiring saying, I need your help with this or say, no, we have a very clear vision. Here's what we want, but you have to differentiate those two. It has to be clear to that artist. I see. I see. Do you find that most clients deal with you in like, you know, high level art terminology or is it more just like general mood? And is that hard to kind of decode? 
it's it's I think what it is as an artist um, uh, it, it's a thing you have to a lot of times decode because so most of the time they're not they're hiring you because they don't have as much experience right so usually the terminology is super you know not they, the word be layman is like they're not used to they're not saying hey I'm looking for art nouveau or I'm yeah. looking for impressionists or I'm, right. they, they're not going to have that knowledge like we would like as artists so what the best suggestion is say if you're hiring someone is go find about a bunch of art that you think this project could be and say here's what we look for if it's specific uh, mm -hmm. if it's not specific give them a bunch of stuff and say i like all of this stuff here and then you tell the artist like take that and bring me a couple of ideas got it got it do you find that you spend a lot of time talking to the people who commission you or do they seem like they just want you to go for it right away um, I try to talk to them, but it's more of like, I sit there and really try to listen to what they're saying. And a lot of times realize in my mind, I'm like, they don't always know what they're asking for and say, okay, how do I break down what they're communicating versus what they're really trying to say to me, what they, what they really want to get out of it. And often those can be two different things. Yeah. Often they'll be, I want this, but really they want something over here and mm -hmm. you have to decode that. And it takes it's a practice thing. I spend a lot less time because I've spent 15, 20 years learning how to differentiate and figure out what they're trying to communicate to me. Um, when I was really young, I had no idea. So I just let them tell me what to do and I would do it. And they'd be mm. like, this is not what I want. Mm. It's one of those things like you have to be good at listening. And, right. But also the people's hiring, you have to be really good at communicating. That's when you get really close to your vision and really get what you want. That's really great. I mean, one of the reasons I think you continue to succeed, you know, in the different kind of animation businesses is that you're an artist who actually communicates. And I think there's a lot of artists out there who just draw or just know how to, you know, uh, do the thing they do. And I think what I found a lot of people who watch the channel are actually in the art community as well. And, you know, they don't have to deal with like client forward style business that you and I do because you know they might be taking direction from a director or from another artist whatever but if you're facing a client out there on the street and they're not using animation vernacular it takes a lot of time to try to figure out how to get what they really want because they may say this but they mean something else and you, you start to figure that out exactly <laughs> yeah and I, and I think as you grow as an artist or you grow as someone who's looking to do these projects is develop that skill of being able to communicate both what you want and what the the client is asking you for. Great, got it, got really it. Really important. Fantastic. So so let's move on. I think whenever I hire an art job, whenever you receive one, um, there's a key phrase that I think a lot of people forget about is is deliverables. You know, so a lot of people say, hey, let's uh, you know design me this thing. That'd be great. But when it gets down to breaking down what design that thing means, you have to take steps, and those steps have to be agreed. Otherwise, you end up in the inevitable endless revision forever revision hell revision hell revision hell so what, yeah. <laughs> what do you look for what do you what do you what would be your typical set of deliverables if i went hey jeff i want a new character design well usually ask for like do you want what how far is it is it just the concept of it is it just like the 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 full turn what level is this going is this going to the final or is this just the development so right you know, being clear as the person hiring, saying, okay, I'm just looking for ideas or I'm, I'm looking for final, this is gonna go into the final animation. If right. you're doing a pitch or something like that, you should be thinking concept, but it looks good, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. And that can change. It yeah. probably will, regardless of, you know, when you're going to that sort of thing. Um, as the artist, it's like, ask them what they're asking for. It's like, yeah. are you look, what's the final project you're looking for? And then you can advise them on that. I think it's great. I mean, I think what you've what you've stepped on here is the difference between concept art and an actual character models. Yeah. So you know, concept art will be what is the mood of the show, what is the general idea, and that can be a rough acrylic painting. It can be gesture drawings. It can be just a, you know a body dimensions. So we kind of know like how big the head is and how big the body, and it's just is this Mickey yeah. Mouse for Japanese anime, like you know just the general moods. But when you get into Character. Yeah, there's a, there's a mood versus technical. Right, and technical. There's a mood versus technical. Are you looking for the technical? Or are you looking for the mood? Great. So Great. mood is like a concept. It's color. It's like, okay, you're trying to impress 
a, a possible client or a possible someone looking for, or you're doing a pitch or yeah. you're looking just to set, set, give them a taste of the story. Mm -hmm. That's a mood. You know, technical, that means you're starting to get into production. That's yeah. a whole different thing. So knowing that what you're trying to pitch will be inform you on what you're going to ask for. Yeah. And, and I think, and tell me if you agree, I think when you're in the concept pitch world, it's a lot more of a free form wild west. Yeah. A lot of people coming well, in for development. But if you're in production, you're usually dealing with a higher, more experienced level person. So yeah. if a production manager calls you and says, Jeff, we need three minor characters on this WB show, you're in the pipe and you're probably dealing with someone who's got that's right. yeah, five, 10 years experience minimum. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Okay. Yep. So um, let, let's, the concept um, can be a little more open. Yeah. Really open. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's, let me ask no. you this. If, um, if someone came to you and said, Hey, I want to do concept design for this new thing I'm doing, what would be a fair amount of time as you would turn that around um, you know, let's, let's just say an average price. I won't use a number, but like for an average price, how much work do you think is fair for a, a, a good artist to do? A good artist to do with something like that, usually if you're trying to concept, you want anywhere from three to 10 ideas of just sketchy kind of ideas. Got it. Okay. Um, and then you would pick two of them, maybe, you know, or so, whittle it down and then you come down to a final. So that's usually like medium price. That could take two weeks or so, one to two weeks. Could I take up to a month? It depends on whether you want full color or you want partial color or you want them in a, in like a setting. Right, so, right. So when you find you end up are. funneling them down, right? So you kind of start wide, yeah. a lot of different things, and you come down yeah. to one more narrow thing. I mean, um, exactly. You just start eliminating or combining. Yeah. So what do you do when they want to go back up the funnel? When they want to go back? I mean, how do you? That's the magic that, question, huh? That is the magic question. The big thing is, um, I think w what you have to do is um, at each stage, um, you want to be clear with the artist. If you're doing the hiring, it's like, here's what I, I, I want. And make sure that when they come back to you the stages, do you, if, do you feel like at that point any of them are getting close or a couple of them, then move forward and assume it'll cost you more to come back to that stage. But if you right. feel like, yeah, if any of them aren't anywhere near it, you need to stop it and have a couple more suggestions come to you say, no, this is not, this is not the right fit. Yeah. Um, and making sure that each stage don't expect to go back a stage because if you're the one hiring, it's on you to make sure it's going in the right direction. If we move on to the next stage or the next level or whittle or combine to go back, you, you should expect, and it's the right thing to do to have to pay to go back a step and restart. I think that's great. So, I mean, that's, let's, let's talk about that messaging from two points of view. So from the artist's point of view, if someone's commissioning you to do the work, you know, before you start that first set of funnels and that big sketching stage, agreeing with them that, you know, once I've gone past this stage, if you want to, you know, go further, that's great. But if you want to go back to the brainstorm, you don't just get it again for free. That's right. Yeah. And I think having that kind of, um, you know, polite, but firm backbone, with a client is important, you know, because it can be very easy to say, I really want this job. I want to make this client happy. And then you're just like endlessly going on the cycle and you're, you're five months in without getting paid a thousand bucks. It's a, and we've talked about that. You and I have had a couple of times where that's happened to us specifically where that's we right. talked to them about it. And that's it's right. one of those things where it's, it's really important. You're right. I think you hit the uh, right on the head is that you have to have a backbone right when it becomes an issue and you talk to them clearly, right? And specifically, both yeah. on both ends. This needs to be both on the artist and the hired. And yeah. as the hiring person, you have to look at it and say, oh, this person is not coming back to me and giving the feedback. That's you correct. need to set the boundaries and say, no, this is how the process needs to go. And the artist needs to say the same thing the other way if it's starting to move them back and forth. It's important for a healthy mm -hmm. relationship and for you guys to produce the best work yeah, that to be clear. I agree. I agree. You know, and if I can speak to anyone who's watching us on the producing side, you know, um, the artist community, the produce community is, is a lot smarter than you think. It's, it's very interconnected. So how well you treat one person or how badly you treat one person will echo through the rest of the industry as, as weeks become months becomes years. So That's right. as a producer, when you work with any kind of artist, you want to be, I think, extra careful that you you know, get all your stakeholders in order, you know? So if I'm commissioning Jeff to do a project for a client, I've got to make sure that every time I get a bunch of drawings from Jeff that I'm 
circulating through, getting every stakeholder's approval, having clarification and an email backup and, and say, hey, everyone, Jeff's moving to the next step. We've agreed these ideas. Is that cool? And then when the stakeholders say that's cool, then I go to commission Jeff. I mean, the, the maybe the, the, the lesser experienced producer mistake is to say like, this is great, go to the next stage and then I'll show it to everyone. That, yeah, that's a, that will always get you into trouble. It's always making sure that everyone's on the same page yeah. in the process, that's that correct. you know you're going to the next stage and that everyone's clear on what those stages were. We had talked about exact deliverables. Each one yeah. of those stages is a deliverable. Yeah. And it needs to be understood that once you move that deliverable to the next level, mm -hmm. once you have to go back, it's a restart. On that's that. right. That's great. So, yeah. uh, so let's move to like a, you know, kind of a subset of that, which is, which is time, you know, so uh, I always try to set a schedule, you know, on every project, especially, you know, more, more so in development is a little hard to wrangle people to an exact date if you don't have like a, a TV air date. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I set a schedule, you know, I like to let everyone know client side, stakeholder side and artist, you know, what the expectation is. So, you know, let's walk through some basics just so people get a rough feeling. You know, I mean, I want to do a new uh, set of ideas from you. I know you said already, but we'll kind of do it all as a big list. How long do I have to wait for my first set of eight, nine rough sketches? That 100% depends on the artist and how fast they are. You, yeah. It's something you have to talk to them when you initially start the schedules. Like how fast, how, how, how comfortable are you getting this minute? So when you, when you first set, get an idea of the deliverables, you then have to ask, talk to the artist and say, here's what we need. Mm -hmm. How long do you think this is going to take you? And yeah, it has to be communication with them and the artist has to be super honest about what they can or cannot do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a big mistake when you walk into that is saying, Oh, they say this, they, they have, we have these five stages, roughs, you know, uh, revisions, a uh, couple of rough passes to figure out which of the two you really like. And then a final. And then, you know, if the artist says, yeah, I can do it in a week. Oh, <laughs> 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 it, it can be a, you know it can be a combination for for disaster i think yeah professionally you should slightly overestimate what you know to be true mm -hmm. um i think mm -hmm. on both sides to make sure that it's a reasonable amount of time so that if any hiccups happen or if like something didn't get hit that someone asked for you can always make sure to go back and you're still on schedule and i think so, that's super important got it so let me ask you this do you think over time have you gotten faster or are you the same or are you slower because you're more careful now? Uh, I, it's kind of a little bit faster, but mm -hmm. I would be a lot faster, but because I'm more careful, uh, it, it pulled it back a little bit. So mm -hmm. I am faster, but not as fast as I potentially could be if I'm just whipping it out. Got um, it. Got it. Which, so I will, you know, I'm also going to make a massive stereotype. So tell me if I'm wrong. I think it's classically difficult for a lot of artists to multitask. You know, because you, you, a lot of them kind of get into their zone. And that's a yes. huge stereotype, so I could be wrong. But the no, thing no, that I, always cracks me up is when someone's like, oh, yeah, I could do that in a week. And I'm like, Ab yeah, if you weren't, um, you know, like eating, sleeping, yeah. uh, you know, commuting, yeah, you know, right. had people. Yeah, if you just had like an actual week in, in front of a Cintiq, you could do it. But, yeah. oh, you, you're also doing three other freelance jobs. Ah, and you're full time at Warner Brothers. Yeah. Suddenly that week is a month. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. They often think of it that way as like, oh yeah, that particular thing they can do uh -huh. in a week. But you're like, yeah, but you're 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 sharing this with other three, four, or five other projects. You need yeah. to keep that in mind, and you also need to make sure when you talk to the artists, like, oh, is that with other projects? Or are you with us exclusively? Like, yeah. you have to communicate that as well because that makes a difference in how fast it comes across. Yeah, and how well it's done. That's great. So you know, I'm I'm going to use that as a little transition. So let's jump over mm -hmm. to um you know the the pre-arrangements and, and the contracts and the ownership stuff because you kind of like stop you know hit it a little bit but let's yeah. go deeper i mean the contractual engagement with an artist um you know has a bunch of guidelines and i think some of the basics you know we can talk about in the channel but it's always very contextual but you know um, the first one you know let's 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 hit the the most important thing what are your feelings about ownership versus work for hire in, des in the design world? Well, I, I think the big thing is I try not to get too much into being partially ownership of what someone else's idea is. I mean, there are a lot of people that as an artist, like they're like, oh, I want you to get involved in this, I'll give you ownership. But 
sometimes on one hand it can be code for i don't want to pay you yeah right yeah. Uh, other times it's like they're just trying to butter up the deal to get you to do it for cheaper yeah. and sometimes it's like yeah it's an honest they're really looking for it um but i think you're better off as a whole at that point to be careful that you're saying okay because it can get you into right, pull you right back into revision hell. It's like, well, you're a part of this. You should be doing these yeah. hundred thousand revisions on it. Yeah. Uh, I think there has to be a professional level of separation between the property that someone else has and they want you to be a part of and you as an artist. And I agree. you decide if, if you want to be a part of creative processes, you probably should just do your own idea and yeah. work that out. So you can, you can go to revision hell, but you like it because it's your yeah. thing. You know, I think, let me add a little nuance to that. I think that a lot of people confuse the world of uh, animation and design and comics, like in illustration, sometimes they kind of bulk them all together. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, you're, you successfully kickstarted an original project, you know, you have partners on that you're working together. Yeah. That's a good place to have ownership. Yes. Because you're launching an IP, you're doing a print medium, you're getting a property out there, you know, as a team. And I think the um, the standards of comics has a lot more ownership on the artist. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I think that's that royalty structure is kind of a little more standard. You know, when you get to the illustration world, especially if it's like a, a commission, I yeah. think it's almost, you know, very little of an yeah. all ownership because, you know, someone's just paying you a flat amount to do it. On the flip side, if you're just illustrating and selling people, it's the opposite. You have 100% rights. You know, yeah. you're just, you know, commissioning prints to people. And then for, you know, for the world of animation, like what I thought of when you said that, you know, is, is if I'm developing a new property and I want Jeff to design it, to pitch it, I have to pay Jeff his proper rate and do a full buyout. Like that's the easiest way to work. Right? It is. Now, if I only have, you know, five or 10 grand to do my entire development package and Jeff is part of that, I could go to Jeff, you know, quite honestly on both knees and say, can I give you 70% of your normal rate and do less deliverables and pay you a 30% bonus if this gets picked up? That's, that's a possible negotiation. You yeah. Know? yeah. What I can't do, and th but that also has to, you know, Jeff has to go, am I going to balance that with the other stuff that I have that is more lucrative, that is more guaranteed, that, you know, has my full rate. Yep. Or, and here's another just idea I was thinking, I can also say, listen, I've got this great written Bible. I've got this great thing. Jeff is the best guy for it. Hey, Jeff, can I just put your name on this? You mm -hmm. don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. you know, just, then you could start to say, I'm going to give you ownership because I'm trying to sell you. Yes. That's a whole different thing. Like, like whole different saying, thing. Like, you're talking about in an animation, which is larger projects, larger budgets. Right. I mean, you could potentially do that in, in um, comic book, but I think it has to be a very personal relationship that you know each other really well. Yeah. And that you're comfortable with those kinds of decisions. I think if someone just randomly contacts you and says, I want to do this, that's very dangerous. You yeah. That's very dangerous. On something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, um, in the world of development, there's a lot of attachment and packaging and, and hustling going around. And, you know, I, I would suggest um, to artists, you know, and, I, and you can tell me what you think. If, if someone wants to attach you onto a project, as long as you are forthcoming on your current uh, restrictions contractually with other companies, that's fine. And as long as you allow yourself some kind of okay, but first right of refusal, you know, just so you're not like, I'm not locking in. And I personally, and I, don't be, I would never sign anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just wouldn't. I'd be like, you know, if you want to shout my name around with something, yeah, yeah. maybe, but I'm not going to like uh, formally join your weird joint venture. For yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you know? it's, it's weary. I have to know the guy really well. If it were you or something like that, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. comfortable with that. But we know each other and we yeah. don't, we've worked each other really professionally. Right. So it's just like, yeah, I'm comfortable with those kind of things. But yeah. if, if it's someone I haven't known long enough or I'm just doing freelance and then they come out after me and say, hey, can you take a reduction because of our budget and we'll yeah. put your name on this? And we'll you're already this. in a bad like, position. Yeah, you're in a bad position. So it's just like, I, I, it's not, I need a professional distance in order to operate with this kind of thing. Yeah. Now, what you were saying is like, there are times when someone's looking for it and say, here's my budget. I want you on this. Like, are you willing to jump on this? And we can give like a right of refusal that, you know, kind of situation down the line and they're paying promptly and they have the budget and they're honest up front that has more potential than i think 
saying, hey, this is that's the, the primary thing and it's you don't have any kind of work in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. How important. much how much design work have you I mean has actually come through for you from outside of industry people? Outside of industry people, I get a lot of people pitching me online for work. Like right. I mean you've got a big social media like, presence. You're you're out there. Yeah. People know you. What do you do? Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I'll, I'll ask them what their budget is and they'll disappear. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, if I, and the first thing I'll do is I'll go there and I'll investigate and say, okay, are these people serious? Like it could, cause you never know. Cause I've gotten a couple of random things that had huge budget and it would just seem like a random shot. You're like, who is this? And then you go and check and you're like, Oh, Oh, (laughs) that is someone I should probably answer. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. um, but there are other times where I get it and they present it like that. And then you ask them what their budget is and it kind of, they kind of disappear. So you realize like you do get pitches like this. It is that you have to make like investigate a little bit online before you follow through. But um, if you find out who they are, LinkedIn's a really good place to kind of check on there. Yeah, I love you know? LinkedIn too. Yeah, um, I think it's a good place to go. But, you know, again, even with that, you should still investigate, you know, make sure right. that you ask them what the budget is, what's the idea, and have them have specs. If they don't have any specs and they're kind of messy, it's another red flag. Got it, got it. Do you, do you talk to a lot of artists as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, what, what would you tell, uh, you know, because you're in a unique position. Well, not unique, in, in a in a professional position where you've got a body of work behind you and people want to hire you for work. But, you know, what about, you know, 21 year old Jeff Wemister, who's got a, you know, a sweet portfolio and not a connection to the industry and someone wants to hire him. What, what would you mm-hmm. say to that kid? Uh, it's kind of funny cause, uh, you know, I, I have projects here and there, you, you know, even the projects I'm on here, I actually had to go and hire someone to help oh. me with backgrounds. Wow. So you become, you have to produce as well. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the process was like, I went through a high, I, I went through a search project trying to find the right people, trying to find connections. How much are they going to have to do? What's it going to cost? How am I going to, if, if this is my budget, how do I deal with it? If this is my budget, how do I hire someone to do the kind of vision that I have for this project? And it went through a couple of people, a couple of conversations. Um, and they sent me to other people that are professional, but I eventually, had kind of gone through a couple of connections. They didn't work out. Um, had one start and it didn't work out. Wow. But then, you know, I went to another one. I did another search and I kind of ran into someone that was, and this is a good way to search. I find is go to find someone that you like, right. Yep. That they're probably, if you're like a smaller budget, they're way out of your budget. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you can either call them, you know, contact them and say, Hey, is there anything similar to your style that you can let me know about? Oh, interesting. Because often they'll like people that's like their own stuff and they'll right. be connected to these people and talk to them. Or you, you find a thing where it's like, who likes them? And you go mm-hmm. look through all this stuff. So I went and looked through art station and looked through all the people that liked their stuff and found oh, people wow. that I was like, Oh, I like them. I like them. I like them. And mm-hmm. I eventually ran into someone that's has enough experience that they're very professional, but they probably don't have as wide, um, uh, experience like in terms of like they haven't done as much and they don't have that large body of work behind them yeah got it. um and i was able to approach them and say hey here's a project here's what we're doing here's our budget um and i think it's a good way to find someone that will work really well with you because i think there are people that are looking for stuff they want those opportunities and they're gonna um work for it and that was kind of like how i was found in the same process you know in that interesting like, yeah so in a way if you're an artist trying to network through the community of artists kind of following work with people that are in your pocket of style can yep. kind of lead to people finding you and, and vice versa. Like if exactly. I want, you know, if, if you're booked for two and a half years at Warner Brothers Animation, but I want someone who has some of your touch, you know, it's like your, your network of artists who you've subcontracted might actually kind of be the person to help me hire. It's exactly what it is. You'll, you'll be surprised they've probably even better fit than you had imagined originally what you thought you were going to do. Cause you see wow. some variation in that that's search. Nice. You're like, Oh wow, that's good. Oh, I didn't think of it doing it that way. Yeah. Maybe that would work, you know, and it's those it. things where you start, it starts getting the wheel turning in the creative process too. And it was good. It was really fun. And I also, that is great. yeah, it came to gave us a really good vision for the whole thing. So very cool. So do you think now, I mean, in, you know, obviously in this kind of quarantine environment and we're all working separately, do you feel like, and I'm going to kind of feed this to so tell me if I'm wrong, that, that artists are producing more because they have no choice. 
Yeah, I think they are. I, I mean, I've seen a lot more of it on Instagram. I've, for yeah. me, it's like, you know, the quarantine, we were kind of planning to do that Kickstarter, you know, and we were like, okay, we're going to roll it and we'll do it around here. But the quarantine came in and then we just like kind of hit full, vo- like full throttle on it. It was like, no better time than right now to kind of yeah. crank this out because it's something we want to do and there's mm-hmm. no better time to do it. it it's just it's a crappy time to have this app, you know, like in general, but we're trying to do our best under the situation and say, you know what, let's take advantage of it as it. far as it is. Got it. All right. So yeah. let, let's, let's talk to our respective audiences and kind of close this up for the day. So I think, you know, you're, you're an artist, you know, you are you know, basically one of the better producers I know as an artist, you know, and you know, you, you manage people well, you manage process well, and you, you always deliver the goods and that's why you keep working. But if you were to kind of give advice out there for artists, you know, working in the world of animation or coming into the world of animation, you know, from the business point of view, not like develop your portfolio stuff and work on your fundamentals and skills. What kind of thing would you tell those people who might be watching surviving animation going, how do I get into the business? What what would you tell them from the business side? Uh, I I think it's a kind of a three prime thing It's one practice being a great communicator. Great that is critical. It's like, be a great communicator, be a great listener, mm-hmm. be a great communicator. Mm-hmm. Um, second, I would say is that um, always follow through on what you say you're going to do. Fantastic. Someone hires you to do something, do it. You right. gotta, even if it means moving mountains, you got to do it because they're depending you said it. on you. Yeah. <laughs> you said they're it. depending on you. Yes. Yeah. They're de- it's critical because like they're going to come back to you for another job and then another job and another job if you're dependable. Mm-hmm. Um, and the inverse, you, the you inverse. drop the ball once, it's bad. It's bad. You're, they're not going to come back to you. They're yeah. not going to come back to you. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's, uh, you know, most people who work all the time have all uh, is a network of the people they've done a good job for. Yes, that's correct. That's right. That's fantastic. You know, and, and that's the best way to think of it is like, how many people have I done a good job for? Got it. So um, communication, reliability, and what's your third? And the third thing is, is um, learning how to network online. It's learning how oh, to find people that are like you, working with people. Because people like I was just saying, was like how I found someone. That's how people are finding people. It's not just the people they're finding, especially with smaller projects. It's they're finding someone and then finding who their followers are or suggestions from that particular artist on someone else that might be closer to their budget for the project. Fantastic. So, so LinkedIn, ArtStation, where else would you find people? Uh, LinkedIn, ArtStation, uh, Instagram, uh, not Twitter so much because they don't post a lot. That's more conversational, yeah. which is good too. It's good to get in conversations because that's part of that networking process. Yeah, I see LinkedIn. a few artists on Twitter, but not, not as much as the other platforms. No, I think LinkedIn probably and Instagram are better for artists in terms of mm-hmm. like interacting with people because it, it gives you a chance. I wouldn't say TikTok because there's not conversation, although yeah. it's a good platform. It's not a conversation platform. And what you're trying to do is develop relationships. That's great. That's, That's the fantastic. most important part. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I feel bad. I only have one really good piece of advice the other way. I don't have a good trio of things ready. So, you know, I will say, you know, um, if, if for anyone out there watching who is on the producing side or has that question that I always get posed to me, which is how do I work with an artist or can you give me an artist? My general advice is to make sure that you have all your answers ready before you contact someone. So, you know, you want to have your schedule, you want to have your budget, you want to have your creative vision, you want to have exactly the deliverables, you want to know your schedule, and you want to know what your, you know, legal negotiation standpoint is with that said artist. So if you don't have those five, six questions up in advance, you get a very sloppy communication, you get a lot of misunderstood expectation, and as best you can to summarize all that up front is how you're going to get responses, you know, so I think one of the ways to not get a good response is, Hey, I love your stuff. I want you to hire, I want to hire you for some gig. Like that's, it's okay. But it's like, Hey, listen, Jeff, my name's Eric. I'm a producer. I have a, you know, $5,000 design project that is due in six weeks. It has three revisions. You know, I want you to do models for the main character. I'm going to need it full color. And it's something I'm doing as a work for hire. I mean, Jeff can like call back on that. But the other yeah. stuff is like, yes. do I want to engage this like casual conversation and then myself have to start to drive the rules? That's not really how I think you should work with artists. So that would no, be- No, I think it's important to have that professional like level of communication needs to be right from the start. Exactly. You need to have all your ducks because like the artist will immediately doubt like, 
we had the conversation earlier where I was like, I had people contact me and that's all they said was like, Hey, I want to hire you. Uh, you know, just, or how much do you cost? Yeah. It's the first thing is like, Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> how much can so it cost people. is like, got to be the most <laughs> annoying question to ever get without any specifics you know that's right that you always know that means it always feels like they're trying to hide something always like oh we have a little budget but i don't want to tell you yet until we've got our idea across (laughs) that's right right. (laughs) well listen thank you so much for joining me uh, jeff and you know i really appreciate you just spending time giving some of this incredible wisdom to people um yeah for you guys that they're watching if you like this you know please like and subscribe and tell your friends this is really a business education channel about the cartoons about animation and you know, people like Jeff or, or people you want to really follow, you can follow him on LinkedIn, right? You can follow him yep. on, on Instagram and right. as well as, do you, do you have an art station as well? I have an art station. It's not filled out yet. I'm working on it right now because I just okay. got on there, but you can okay. find me just my Jeff Wamister and you can find me on any of those platforms. That is great. Any final bits of wisdom before we call it a day? <laughs> um, uh, I mean, about lifting, front. about, you know, take a oh, about weightlifting? <laughs> <laughs> do it because it's awesome. <laughs> just do it you gotta come over by the way i got my garage gym almost set up so when this is all over we'll uh we'll wail on some weights in the in the bay in the uh, garage that sounds great man okay i've got one going right now so i've been able to lift here and there which is great. all right very lucky to have that but all right i gotta i gotta see that next post on instagram <laughs> you'll have to <laughs> okay thanks for all joining right, me and i'll see you guys in the next Absolutely. one and everyone stay safe out there okay bye see you later jeff thank you bye